Have you ever wasted ages scrolling through your camera roll, desperately trying to find that one photo? You know the one. You can picture it in your head, but it's buried somewhere in the thousands of images on your phone or computer. If that sounds familiar, then tagging your photos is going to be your new best friend. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the best way to tag your photos so you can find what you need in seconds. Whether you're working on Google Photos, Apple Photos, or using software like Adobe Bridge, I'll explain exactly how to tag effectively without making a mess of your photo library. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll share a bonus tip that takes tagging one step further, helping you get even more value out of your photo collection why tagging is so helpful. Let's start with why tagging is so useful. Tagging is like adding a sticky note to each photo. You're telling your computer or app what's in the photo, who's there, where it was taken, what event it was, or what makes it special. You're adding context and meaning. And here's the magic. Once you've added those tags, you can search for photos by those tags. So rather than scrolling endlessly or trying to remember what year something happened, you just type in a word like beach or granddad, and there it is. Tags are also a great way to future-proof your photo collection. You might not need to find the picture of your garden renovation right now, but five years down the line, when you want to see how much it's changed, these tags will make it so much easier to find. How tagging works in Google Photos. Let's start with Google Photos. Now, Google Photos doesn't let you manually tag your photos in the traditional sense, which can be a bit frustrating if you like to be in control. Instead, Google uses AI to automatically tag your photos behind the scenes. You can search for things like beach, birthday or cat, and Google will pull forward photos that it thinks match that theme. It's not perfect, but it's surprisingly good. You can also search for people as long as you've got facial recognition turned on, and it will show you grouped faces that it recognizes. And if your photos have a location data, you can also search by place too. If you want more control, you can go to the image info with the three dots on your phone or the eye on your computer and add a description there. But, and this is a big one, none of those tags and descriptions stay with your photos if you export them. So if you download a photo from Google Photos and save it to your computer or upload it somewhere else, all those smart tags and your description disappear. That tagging only lives in Google Photos. So if you want your tags to travel with your photos, you need to use software that writes them directly to the metadata of your image. And that's where tools like Adobe Bridge come in. Tagging with Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is one of my favorite tools for adding proper tags to photos. It's totally free if you have an Adobe account and it gives you a lot of control without being too complicated. Once you've opened your folder of photos in Bridge, you'll want to head to the Keywords panel. If you can't see it, you can turn it on under the Windows menu. The pane will show you a list of keyword categories. You can click on any of the existing keywords to apply them to selected photos, or you can create your own. To tag photos, just select the images you want and then click on the keywords. If you want to add a new keyword, you can click the plus, type it and press enter. It will be saved to your keywords for future use. You can tag people, places, events, themes, whatever makes sense to your collection. And the best bit, you can select a whole bunch of photos and tag them all at once. So if you've got 20 pictures from a birthday party, you can tag them all with birthday, Emma, 2023, in just a few clicks. These tags are saved to the metadata of the file, which means they go wherever the photo goes. Upload it to cloud storage, copy it to a hard drive, email it to a friend, they'll still be there. It's a brilliant way to make your photos searchable and portable. Tagging in Apple Photos. Apple Photos doesn't call them tags exactly. It uses something called keywords and they're added through the phone's info panel. First, select the photo you want to tag, or even better, select a group of photos that all relate to the same event or person. Then click on the little eye icon in the top bar to bring up the photo information panel. This is where you'll see things like the date the photo was taken, location if it has one, and underneath that you'll find a section of keywords. Just click in the keyword box and start typing. You can type 
anything you like here, names, places, events, and once you hit return, those keywords will be saved to the photos. If you've selected multiple photos, the keywords will apply to all of them, which is a great time saver. So for example, if you've just imported a batch of photos from a birthday party, you might add keywords like birthday, Emma, 2024, or party. These keywords will now become searchable inside the app. So when you use the search bar, your tagged photos will pop up based on what you've written. Now, one of the handy but hidden features in Apple Photos is the keyword manager. You can access it by going to the Windows menu at the top of your screen and selecting Keyword Manager. This opens a pane that shows you every keyword you've ever added into Apple Photos. From here, you can do a bit of housekeeping. Delete keywords you don't use anymore, tidy up any spelling mistakes, which I always end up making, or even renaming keywords so you're keeping your tagging consistent. You can also assign keyboard shortcuts to commonly used keywords, which is brilliant if you're tagging a lot of photos in one go. For example, you could assign one to family, two to holiday, so instead of typing it out every time, you just tap the number and it's done. Now a quick heads up, the tagging system in Apple Photos isn't as powerful as what you'd find in the likes of Adobe Bridge or Lightroom, but for basic organization and quick search improvements, it works really well. When to tag and what to tag. Here's something I often get asked. Should I tag every single photo? And the answer is absolutely not. Start with your best photos, the ones that you come back to again and again. Your favorite family moments, holidays, all those wow photos that you always want handy. Tag those first. Focus on what you want to be able to search for. If you're never going to search for trees, don't waste your time tagging every photo with trees. But if you always want to find pictures of your dog or your old house, then those are perfect categories to tag. Don't be afraid to start simple. You can always add more tags later. The key is to get a system going that works and keeps things organized. Now, if you're thinking, Amanda, this sounds amazing, but I have no idea where to begin, then I'd love for you to check out my Photo Mess Success courses. We go step by step, no tech jargon, just practical tools and clear steps. You can find out more at photomesssuccess.co.uk, where I'll take you from mess to mastery one step at a time. But let's keep going because I've got one last tip you'll definitely want to hear. Bonus tip, tag for meaning, not just content. Here's my favorite tagging tip of all. Don't just tag what's in the photo, tag what it means. Instead of just tagging birthday, write something like last birthday with Nan or first holiday as a family of four. These tags might take a little bit longer to type, but they make a huge difference when you're looking back in a few years time. It's the kind of tagging that brings emotion into your photo organizing. And let's be honest, that's what our photos are all about. So that's how you tag your photos the right way, whether you're using automatic tools like Google Photos or want total control with Adobe Bridge. Remember, tags aren't about perfection, they're about making your photos work for you. But what if you want to find your best photos? Then check out this little video next. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more photo organizing tips. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.